for our first creative exercise, we are going to work with looking at color as a way to create dynamic contrast. And I've got my color wheel, much loved color wheel here. And I just want to start with a really quick overview. And this is just to give you a sense of the primary colors of red, yellow, and blue, and then colors that are opposing those colors. So red, green, yellow, violet, oops, blue, orange. These generally will be colors that really create a contrast, a dynamic contrast when they're next to each other. That said, this exercise for me is going to be a little more personal and then I'm gonna just work with showing you a variety of colors that I love next to each other. And a lot of them will be sort of in the realm of compliments. Some will explore color in terms of uh, more muted colors with vibrant colors. And then I encourage you to do this at home. So we've got just a big sheet of watercolor paper. And over here on my palette, I'm going to put out some of my favorite colors to get going. So this is a quinacridone nickel azo gold, kind of a yellowy rusty color. Uh, this is a little orange deep from the Blick matte acrylic matte uh, acrylic um, series. We've got some really great fluorescence. This is a fluorescent orange, and or sorry, that was a fluorescent red. This is a fluorescent orange. We've got green gold. This is a golden color, and Payne's gray, which is a really like nice deep blue, got some magenta, some teal, some yellow, called yellow deep, and let's see, we're going to add some gray, Just sort of building up a fun palette here to work with. This is a pink deep, it's called, another Blick matte color. Oops, come on, oops, might not have opened that one yet. A little inner seal here, sort of similar to the magenta. And that's a good starting point. Um, oh, of course I'm going to add some white. Always love to have a little white on my palette and a little bit of black. All right. So I'm gonna dive in with just some color swatches. And this is much like my color craving exercise for those of you who have maybe done that in the e-course. Um, the idea is that we're just gonna add a bit of color. This is the fluorescent orange. And then I'm just asking myself, what would be really dynamic next to that color? What would really pop and create a nice contrast? And I'm gonna go with sort of a little mixture here of green gold with teal and then i'm going to add a little more teal so that's my first little mini study um, i'm going to add for my next one a little bit of fluorescent red and for this one i'm going to go with a really subdued gray so that is creating contrast in a whole different way. So it's not complements, it's more of a muted color along with a bright color. So that's a whole nother world to explore in terms of contrast. Next, I'll try a little bit of Prussian blue. And what do I crave next to that? What is gonna create a nice contrast? I think I'll go with I'm really just coming up with this in the moment, <laughs> so you can probably tell. This is a little bit of that uh, matte purple with a little bit of white mixed in. And this is a great exercise to just develop a lot of different color combinations that you love. You could do this, you could do you know, tons of these, maybe stick them up on your wall next to where you paint as a nice reference. Okay, this is a nickel as a gold, one of my favorite colors, really beautiful. And then I'm gonna go with one of my all-time favorite combos here, which is to add a bit of teal. 
And as you for this one, you can see I'm overlapping them a little bit, and that creates a nice gradient between the two. Okay, let's move into a little different realm here. We're gonna go with a bit of yellow. And I'm gonna I'm gonna circle back to the gray. Loving gray and yellow together as a kind of subdued palette. And then I'm gonna move into this kind of corally color. And this whole process is just super intuitive. Um, you know, you can definitely work with direct complements, colors across from each other on the color wheel, but you can also just, I encourage you to really start to work with what feels good for you. So for me, that's a fluorescent orange with that coral. They're not um, so far away from each other on the color wheel. They're actually analogous, meaning they're right next to each other, but really awesome palette next to each other. Okay, let's go with a little green gold. And now I'm gonna come back to that coral. Really nice. And then let's try a little bit of magenta. One of my good old friends, magenta. And you know, a color I love next to that is that quinacridone. So moving on, I'm going to work with fluorescent red and straight teal. It's a little bit blended with what was on my brush, but you get the idea. And let's see here. Didn't add this on my palette originally, but I'm going to add a little bit of turquoise. And I'm running out of brushes, so I'm going to use my finger. Another one of my old favorite colors. And I think with this, I'm going to mix some titanium white with my fluorescent orange. Really pretty. Really, really nice. And let's work with a little bit of yellow. We haven't done much with yellow yet. I think it's so easy to stay sort of in one color world, like we get comfortable with certain colors. And so this exercise is going to be a really good one if you are someone who hasn't experience, uh, experimented outside of your comfort zone with color because just having these little swatches, it's very, um, you know, forgiving. There's not like adding a whole big color to a painting, but hopefully it'll open up some, some new ideas for you. There's that quinacridone again. I'm going to come with the Prussian blue next to it. Okay, so as you can see, you could probably go on and on and on with this whole exercise, and I hope that um, this inspires all kinds of little um, experimentations. You can do this on little pieces of paper, on big pieces of paper. Maybe it ends up all coming together and making a painting. Whatever you do, um, I hope you enjoy playing with color, exploring color, and really looking at what two colors do when they are next to each other.